Well, if you're a gun owner in Senate District Number 17, you have a choice to make in the upcoming May 24 Republican Party primary. Who is the pro-gun candidate who will best fight for your gun rights going forward? That is the question. Aaron Dorr here, guys, with Georgia Gun Owners. You know, with session over, we have focused for weeks in the last, I guess, a month now, exclusively on trying to compile all the facts that we can give to our members and other gun owners on all these contested Republican Party primaries. We do that because we can't tell you who to vote for as a non-for-profit organization. What we can do is compile the facts so you guys can decide for yourself who will best fight for your gun rights going forward here in Atlanta. We do that by looking at a, a wide array of information. Number one, our candidate survey program. We ask the candidates what they would do, how they would vote on various bills, and if they answer that, that gives us a lot of information to give to our members. We're also compiling statements from their Facebook pages and websites, uh, public debates or forums where they talk about gun rights. And if they're an incumbent, we're of course checking their record in office. How have they voted on gun bills in years past here in the state capitol? So that's what we've been working on for the last couple of weeks. And when it comes to this race, we have some information you guys must see before you decide who to vote for. We're talking about District number 17, it's all of Morgan County and then portions of Walton, Newton, and Henry County, east and south of Atlanta. Now, this seat has been moving more to the left in years past, but it's still, for the most part, a safe Republican seat. And so whoever wins this May 24 primary will likely be your state senator for the next four years. So this one's for all the marbles, guys. Now, in this race, we have a challenger, Brett Malden. Here's what we know about Brett. Now, Brett has signed the GGO candidate survey with all pro-gun answers. He has promised in writing to oppose all the gun control bills being pushed in Atlanta, whether it's from the Stacey Abrams style radical left or Republican rhinos on the, on the right. He's going to oppose all the gun control bills that are filed in Atlanta, according to his candidate survey. And we're happy to acknowledge that. Now, when it comes to the pro-gun bills, Brett has, uh, Brett has promised to vote for them when they come to the floor and to co-sponsor those, but he did not want to go so far as to say he would lead the fight for gun rights by sponsoring pro-gun bills. And with these questions, we give them uh, three answers when it comes to a pro-gun bill. They can lead the fight for this pro-gun bill by sponsoring the legislation. They can kind of follow in that fight by co-sponsoring and voting for legislation, or they can just flat out vote no, you know, vote anti-gun. So we're trying to figure out who's pro-gun and who's anti-gun, and then within the pro-gun camp, who will lead in this fight? We don't want a lot of followers. We have plenty of followers right now. That's the problem. It's been a 10-year battle to pass constitutional carry because we have all these pro-gun Republicans in Atlanta, and we have very few who will lead in that fight and make their leadership put these bills on the floor for a vote. So trying to figure out that difference is also part of our challenge in this survey process. And so again, while Brett has surveyed pro-gun, and we're happy to acknowledge that, he limited his willingness to fight for gun rights to taking kind of that backseat approach and safely co-sponsoring bills, but not leading in that charge. That brings up incumbent state senator Brian Strickland. Now, Brian went the opposite direction. Brian didn't just say he'd be, he'd be a pro-gun vote. Brian promised on our survey to sponsor pro-gun bills, to lead that fight for gun rights, specifically when it comes to the Second Amendment Preservation Act, or SAPA for short. You guys know this is a big agenda item for GGO now that we have constitutional carry. You know, Joe Biden's a madman. And the guy is signing executive orders as fast as he can, attacking our gun rights, even though they've never been voted on by Congress, they're going to be taking effect later on this year. And the whole idea behind this is he is counting on states to enforce his tyrannical BS. And what SEPA does, what SEPA says when it's passed, it tells, uh, it tells a madman Joe Biden, you can pass this stuff, maybe, or you can sign your, your orders and declare gun control by fiat, maybe. But we're not going to use Georgia troopers, Georgia deputies, Georgia city cops to help you enforce it. So we're not challenging the supremacy clause, and we're not challenging Biden's authority to pass gun control. We're saying that, by God, we're not going to enforce it here. And Brian has promised to sponsor 
that bill going forward. Brian also was a leading uh, member in the fight to finally pass constitutional carry this year in Atlanta. Right now, in his current capacity, Brian is the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. All of the gun bills uh, went through his committee this session. We had, uh, gosh, we had two or three different iterations of constitutional carry. We had four or maybe even six different hearings in judiciary about constitutional carry. That's where I testified, for example, on behalf of GGO members. And the entire process, Senator Strickland helped us to stave off any harmful amendments that would weaken constitutional carry. He helped to keep the out of control radical left uh, at least to a dull roar in the committee when we were going back and forth in our committee testimony. And he made sure that the bills didn't stall out. One of the problems that we had was the House was trying to deliberately slow roll constitutional carry and possibly run out the clock on the bill. And what Senator Strickland did was push both versions of constitutional carry through his committee at record speed to get those bills back in the House so GGO members could thunder on the House and say, pass the damn bill. And so Brian's work was instrumental in us getting this bill passed this session in Atlanta. And we definitely want to acknowledge that. And also, as you guys probably know, there was a big push this year on mental health reform. Now, look, <laughs> the bill was sponsored by Speaker David Ralston. Any reform bill coming from David Ralston, I can almost assure you there's no reforms in it. It probably got made worse. But I don't specialize in GDO. GDO is not focused on mental health. We focus on your gun rights. So I can't speak to the entire bill, but... When that bill first passed out of the House, there was definitely gun control provisions snuck into the bill. The first one more or less paved the path for red flag gun seizures here in Georgia, an absolute no-go for GGO Nation. And the second part of this mental health reform bill that concerned us was kind of a mobile roving mental health response unit that the governor can establish with taxpayer money to go around in these crisis situations and potentially confiscate guns from people before bad things could happen, right? All kinds of room for abuse, maybe not with the current governor, but what if we had a Governor Stacey Abrams, God help us? That was the concern that we had. By paving that path and opening up Pandora's box like that, we were going to be having real problems down the road if we have a Democratic governor. And so once that horrible language passed the House, our first call was to Brian and said, Brian, the bill's coming over to your committee. You have got to take out these bad provisions, run an amendment, gut this sucker, and pass the underlying bill, but get the gun control out. And that is exactly what Brian did this session. He ran an amendment, they pulled all that harmful stuff out, and they passed the remainder of the bill, and that is what became law this year here in Atlanta. But that work behind the scenes was a big deal, and the amount of work he did on these both these bills, uh, the mental health crap and constitutional carry, was big and was instrumental. And so, again, we're always trying to find the most believable, the most objective facts to give you. It's a primary. Everyone's going to claim to be pro-gun. And both these guys have, and both of them surveyed pro-gun, but Brian promised to lead that fight, and Brian's actions have shown his, his, uh, he's absolutely committed to doing that here in Atlanta. So, guys, that's the information we have. Again, if you live in this area, be sure and thank Brett for his survey, but ask him, you know, why, why don't you want to lead in that fight? We want you to lead the fight for gun rights, not just follow orders from leaders. And if you see Brian, be sure and thank him as well, not just for promising to lead the fight for gun rights, but for actually leading this past session, both on constitutional carry and on stripping out the bad language in the horrible mental health reform bill, which passed earlier this year, guys. That's what we have for you. Be sure and share our video all across social media. Forward it via email. Get the word out, guys. Help everyone know where these candidates stand. And join our fight for freedom, guys, at joingggo.com.